Hello, Polygoners! I am Shaft, you are watching Polygon Gaming, here on the top left hand side of Abyssal Reef, in a slightly longer game, so we're starting at the beginning of the mid game, in the red Zerg Trunks, he's none other than Greed. And on the bottom right hand side of the map, playing for Confederation, Confed Gaming! It's a team run by a really good friend of mine named Honey Badger. Check him out. He's observing our next Polygon Invitational. It's the Blue Terran. He is Shade. All right, so this is definitely going to be a mech game. We've got the Banshee. We've got the Cloak. We've got some Hellions flooded out here. We've got a fast third base for our Zerg and a little bit of Reaper harassment. Definitely a head on workers over here. Everything really in this game looking totally normal. The Hellions coming in here, trying to do some of the damage to the drones. I'm pretty sure if you've watched StarCraft more than twice, you've seen this exact same setup. But drones trying to cover this high ground until the Lings and the Queens can knock the Hellions back. Doing a great job. That was a really, really good tactic there by Greed, who is actually true to his name in the sense that he's great at keeping his workers alive and eking out a few extra workers and a little bit less army but still not getting punished for it that said though shade has managed to take an economic lead so it's going to be up to greed who has actually gone for a very fast overlord speed also a tendency of particularly greedy players to do some damage the link's gonna be swinging in here and that is not a full wall so the link's gonna get a great surround here on the hellions one hellion does get completely surrounded killed off some good splits here by greed he is trying to get back out of that wall but some SCVs do present the opportunity to get themselves killed he is more than willing to satisfy them with that some link reinforcements coming in here in the north these links getting cleaned up here in the south lings in the north killing off the scv working on that command center so buying himself just a little bit of time until that command center is completed so you have the time until the scv shows up the time until the scv finally completes it and the fact that another scv has to be uh, exposed to these three lings who could still go pretty offensive the hellions may be able to roast them but it will depend if they're on this side of the map because the hellions do not want to be in a defensive position and that means they are going to be swinging into their offense the overlord does get a good scout here we'll see if he does choose to activate these lings and uh, another good overlord scout always throwing the overlords they only cost minerals that one gas upgrade it's wonderful 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 throwing uh speed overlords at your opponent much much more economic than wasting gas on overseers and then trying to throw them at your opponent but the hellions are going to be swinging in here with banshee support that means the hellions are not going to be able to uh worry about the queens because the queens are going to be taking damage both from the hellions and the banshees lings are just going to be zoning for the queens and of course there are some extra queens on the map going to knock the hellion banshee force back but the cloak is still running on shades banshee he's going to want to fix a little issues like that but i believe he was a little bit distracted maybe by a little bit of a counterattack over in here hard to be a hundred percent certain but the uh command center going to be floating leaving a wide open gap that could be exploited but there are no links on that side of the map hellbats have been produced though and this banshee still just ticking 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 away on the energy shade definitely gonna be upset at himself for wasting all of that energy when he could have been replenishing it however the hellbats gonna be swinging in here and the lands uh which were pretty weak against uh <laughs> against the queens actually uh just getting knocked the fuck back by by these lings so really awesome play here again the greediness of this player called greed uh really really showing itself here now, Spire is going to be completing here in about 20 seconds. We've got the plus one carapace finally coming, but there is no plus one melee or ranged right now. Um, the thing is, right now, with Gumiho having just completely dominated Sue in the last GSL, you are seeing a lot heavier mech styles, even a lot of Thor drops, which is what Gumiho really made famous. Um, Lings and drops, great against that sort of style. But uh, this definitely what we're seeing out of shade here because we've got the the, the extra upgrades here with no um, eBay's. We got the Vikings. We got the siege tanks. We got the Hellions, um, and and this is the three base structure that you saw Gumi here really really utilizing in those games against Sue. So we'll see if Greed can adapt a little bit better than uh, than his Zergi counterpart Sue in the last GSL and looks like the first Thor drop has arrived while I was talking about it 12 workers have been killed most of them being Maynarded off we've got to get some of these overlords in positions to scout this sort of thing so Greed already working on that while uh, the Thors they aren't that mobile they love to kill workers but they're not that great at killing bases when you just have two of them so he's going to be forced to pull those back but now greed knows all about them he's got the burrow on the way so unless uh 
Shade wants to be wasting precious, precious scans. This is going to be a little bit harder to kill his workers, so Greed definitely reacting appropriately there. The Vikings, of course, there to uh, both punish any kind of lings, uh, which, you know, did get some work done here on the SCV line. Um, but also to make the Thor drops a little stronger by killing off the Overlords. Mutilus is going to be trying to swing in here into the third base or even catch maybe some of the Thors as they are in transit there's really nothing on the ground right now that can deal with air just the vikings but the vikings are going to be enough to deal with a small group of mutilists now we've got uh, the uh medevac boost going off and gonna allow the thors and the vikings to go ahead and take out all of those mutilists greed losing a lot of gas in that engagement that was probably about five to seven hundred gas and we do see that another command center is being built this is a fourth base um, which is about the same time that Greed is getting his own fourth base. Of course, Zerg love to be one base ahead, so this is not a great position at all for Greed. He's going to have to decide, does he want to go for, well, he is going for the higher level tech. Does he want to use that higher level tech to either try to kill his opponent or to try and take another base? But this base is not very well saturated, and his opponent's already moving over here. So before he can worry about anything else, he's going to have to worry about defending his base, and he is actually 28 army supply behind his opponent, but he's got a little bit of an upgrade advantage. We'll see how he is able able to use this to his advantage. The Banshee coming in here, knocking most of these workers back, and it's going to pull the Zerg army to this location. Of course, uh, we've got a little bit of an elevator type play with the tanks and the Hellbats guarding the tanks, the Thors up here, and then can easily come back down in in the face of any kind of airplay that might show up. Mutalists, of course, have been threatened, but we ha are seeing the Roach Hydralisk switch at this point because Mutalists is just not that great against Thors or Vikings. Queens trying to deal with this, but Queens are not not enough on their own we have shade swinging in here to this uh now third base fourth base was killed third base gonna be forfeit it looks like but the roaches are here to try and uh try and put up a little bit of a fight but it's a small number of roaches another uh reinforcement roaches coming in here on the side taking out a good number of the tanks but uh pretty bad ravager shots actually uh hitting a tank that was already killed the southern roaches killing up some of the tanks as well looks like these tanks will be obliterated some great splitting here by greed but these two tanks actually managing to survive just a few roaches. <laughs> not quite able to penetrate that but the hydro is coming in here queen does fall gonna kill off some of these vikings that have decided to land and pulling the hydro right into range of the the tanks really the vikings are there to act as a buffer to pull units into the tanks but the tanks now um unseaging and getting picked up moved to a better location preferably somewhere not so close to the creep but the hydralists want to utilize the creep to go ahead and get over here underneath the medevacs will get under the vikings killing those off instead three vikings do fall but the rocks are gonna keep the terran safe for the moment greed may choose to uh, knock those down to stop situations like that from happening in the future creep spread looking pretty good here in the this location this location's okay it's kind of close to this base and uh, this location also kind of close to this base. So defensively, um, the creep spread's not been that great, but Shade has been doing a great job staying offensive to punish that. Maybe a few extra queens, not really sure. Green may want to figure out some way of working on that, though. We do see Shade moving out across the map again with his Hellbat tank um, liberator now, Viking army. No Thors in the medevac, so he is moving on to the next transition in this. We do have the plus three uh vehicle attack upgrade on the way no repairs were done to this really weakened siege tank who is still sitting on three hp this should probably be the first target of like just one hydro let's just throw him right in there but liberator zone going to be keeping him very very safe as you see the liberator zone allow the tanks to move forward tanks move forward liberators move forward and we are slowly seeing this leapfrog into range of the hatchery he's not just quite there yet maybe getting his tanks just a little bit closer he tries to use the scan but again the tanks are still just out of range because you know sh tanks can actually shoot farther than they can see believe it or not all right good abduct there by the vipers but vipers are very low on energy killing off uh one of the vikings the other viking is able to get away because the tanks were firing on those hydralists scaring them off a little bit they're skittish they're like cats man and the tanks uh yeah trying to pull the hydralists into the tank fire hellbats moving forward now moving back liberator zones are well established and greed just choosing not to go into that the tank does get trouble that was at three hp tank he was like nah screw you 
Actually, no, 3 HP tank's still here. I guess it was just a weak tank from the abduct. Okay, cool. Well, we do have tanks and Thors coming in here for the Terran player. Shade. Oh, yes, inching forward. Gonna try and take this base, but while this is happening, we have some Hellbats on this location over here. So, a little bit of the split force. Not actually a very common tactic when it comes to mech play, but it doesn't even matter. Shade's like, oh, yeah, man, I've got 1,400 minerals and 1,700 gas. I'm so close to 200, 200. What you gonna do? Some nice abducts on these Thors on some of the tanks as well. A nice pickup on that Thor. Oh my god, the micro gear by Shade. And that's going to be it. GG is called by Greed. Really, it came down to tactical implementations with Mech. That's really all ZVT ever comes down to is tactical implementations. For example, there was a lot of them in this game, but one I can point to very clearly that's fresh in my mind is the Liberator leapfrogging in conjunction with the tanks of course the abducts did come out but he was able to deal with the abducts just by having stronger production and forcing the energy to be spent shade showing a master play in tactics in this game both from the elevator drop which kept his back end units a lot safer while allowing him to attack the high ground utilizing the thors by using the medevac boost to chase down mutalists and taking like seven out of seven of them out at once just a master class and tactical play so if you're a terran who's maybe having a little bit of issues with zerg maybe it's not your macro maybe it's not your spending i mean those things can always be improved don't get me wrong but maybe it's your tactics that's all this matchup is guys i am shaft with polygon gaming if you like this content please make sure you hit that smash that like button and smash the subscribe button as well if you really really like this content recommend it to your friends and visit our patreon link in the description donating just one dollar to us on patreon will begin earning you reward points more details and the link in the description guys i'm shaft with polygon gaming and shadow my dudes if you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.